This is Colin Selleck of Binghamton University. This is chapter 13.5 from the book Dynamics by R.C. Hibbler. Today I will talk about the equation of motion in normal and tangential coordinates. Today's objectives, you will be able to apply the equation of motion, that's Newton's second law, using normal and tangential coordinates. Activities include applications, the equation of motion using NT coordinates, and some problem solving. First in applications, racetrack turns are often banked to reduce the frictional forces required to keep the cars from sliding up to the outer rail at high speeds. If the car's maximum velocity and a minimum coefficient of friction between the tires and track are specified, how can we determine the minimum banking angle theta required to prevent the car from sliding up the track? Here's a ride at an amusement park. The hydraulically powered arms turn at a constant rate, which creates a centrifugal force on the riders. We need to determine the smallest angular velocity of cars A and B such that the passengers do not lose contact with their seat. Satellites are held in orbit about the Earth by using the Earth's gravitational pull as the centripetal force, the force acting to change the direction of the satellite's velocity. Knowing the radius of orbit of the satellite, we need to determine the required speed of the satellite to maintain this orbit. All of these problems can be solved using Newton's equation of motion and using normal and tangential coordinates. Now when a particle P moves along a curved path, it is more convenient to think of the motion in terms of normal and tangential co coordinates. This is very similar to chapter 12 when we studied kinematics using normal and tangential coordinates. The normal direction n always points towards the center of the radius of curvature. In a circle, the center of curvature is the center of the circle. The tangential direction t is tangent to the path, usually set as positive in the direction of the motion of the particle. Now Newton's equation of motion seen here is a vector equation, so it's a simple matter to write it in terms of the normal and tangential coordinates as seen here. Remember there's no motion in the binomial direction, so the acceleration in that direction is also zero. And we can write the scalar version of this equation, the summation of forces in the tangential direction is equal to mass times the acceleration in the tangential direction. And we can do likewise for the normal direction. So let's say you borrowed your uncle's Porsche and you took it to Watkins Glen. You're traveling around the racetrack. So here you are on the racetrack. Now the tangential acceleration is your rate of change of speed with respect to time. So as you press the accelerator or press the brake as you're going around the track, your velocity is changing and the rate at which that velocity is changing is the tangential acceleration. Now remember the normal acceleration is pointed towards the center of curvature and it is a function of your velocity. It's the velocity squared over rho where rho is the radius of curvature. So this is a sub n. Recall that the path of motion is a function of x you can determine the radius of curvature using this equation. That is 1 plus the derivative of y with respect to x squared. That quantity raised to 3 half power divided by the second derivative of y with respect to x. So let's go over how to solve problems with the nt coordinates. This is very similar to rectilinear coordinates, x, y. So use n and t coordinates when the particle is moving along a known curved path. Establish the coordinate system on the particle. Draw the free body diagram. The normal acceleration is always inward towards the radius of curvature. Tangential acceleration may act either positively or negatively in the t direction, depending upon whether or not you're slowing down or speeding up. Apply the equations of motion. That's Newton's second law. Sometimes you'll need to use the kinematic relationships for normal and tangential components, which we studied in chapter 12. And the tangential acceleration is equal to v dv ds, and the normal acceleration is v squared over rho. Let's go over an example. So this 10 kilogram ball 
has a velocity of 3 meters per second when, when it is at point A. Find the tension in the cord and the increase in the speed of the ball. So our plan as always is to establish a coordinate frame, draw the free body diagram, and apply the equation of motion, this time in the normal tangential directions. So first I'll put my coordinate frame on the particle at point A. The normal direction is towards the center of curvature and the tangential direction I'll put in this direction, the positive velocity direction. So let's draw the free body diagram of the ball. There's the tension in the cord and there's the weight of the ball. And this angle is 45 degrees. Now let's apply the equations of motion. So here's the free body diagram. We can have some forces in the normal direction. That's equal to the mass times acceleration in the normal direction. So in the normal direction we have T minus the component of the weight, which is W sine of 45. So the normal acceleration is V squared over rho. So it's 3 squared over rho, which is 2. Now it's a 10 kilogram ball, so the weight is 10 G. Mass is 10. So now we know the mass, the acceleration, and the weight. We can solve for the tension. 114 newtons. Now let's sum forces in the tangential direction. That's equal to mass times acceleration in the tangential. And the only force in the tangential direction is the weight times the cosine of 45. So making the substitutions, the mass is 10 times tangential acceleration, the weight is 10 g times cosine of 45. So the tangential acceleration is 6.94 meters per second squared. Let's solve another problem. Here we have a 800 kilogram car traveling over a hill. The hill is in the shape of a parabola, which is given by this equation here. When the car is at point A, its velocity is 9 meters per second, and its acceleration is 3 meters per second squared. We want to find the normal force and the resultant frictional force exerted on the road at point A by the car. Our plan as always, establish coordinate frame, draw the free body diagram, apply the equations of motion, this time in the NT directions, and we'll use calculus to determine the slope and radius of the curvature of the path at point A. So first we'll establish a coordinate frame. We're interested in point A, so the normal direction will be in this direction, and tangential direction I'll take in this direction. Let's draw the free body diagram of the vehicle at point A. Here's the N direction, T direction. So we have the weight of the vehicle, we have the normal force, and we have a frictional force. Now this road at this point is at some unknown angle theta. We'll need to solve for that as well. So here's the free body diagram. So let's apply the equation of motion in the normal and tangential directions. So summation of forces in the normal direction is the mass times acceleration in the normal direction, which is the weight times cosine of theta minus n. Now we know the weight is 800 kilograms times g, we know the normal acceleration is v squared over rho, and we know the velocity is 9, so it's 9 squared over rho. So making the substitutions, we can write that 800 times g, which is 9.81, cosine of theta minus n is equal to 800 times 81 over rho. And we can simplify this for n as a function of theta and rho. Now let's sum forces in the tangential direction. That's equal to the mass times acceleration in the tangential direction. So summation of forces in the tangential direction is the weight times the sine of theta 
minus the frictional force. Now as before, the weight is m times g, or 800 g, and the tangential acceleration is given as 3 meters per second squared. We can make the substitutions and come up with 800 times 9.81 sine of theta minus f is equal to 800 times 3. Now we can get an equation for f as a function of theta. 7848 sine theta minus 2400. So now we have an equation for n as a function of theta and rho, and we have an equation for f as a function of theta. So all we need to do is find theta and rho at this point on the track, and to do that we'll use calculus. Now recall the equation for the parabola was y is equal to 20 times the quantity 1 minus x squared over 6400, and that's, that was given. So we'll need the first derivative, which is minus 40x over 6400. We'll also need the second derivative. That's equal to minus 40 over 6400. Now the equation for rho is given by calculus to be the quantity 1 plus the first derivative squared, that quantity raised to the 3 half power divided by the second derivative. So let's do that. So we have 1 plus the first derivative, which is minus 40x over 6400 squared that quantity raised to 3 half power divided by the second derivative which is minus 40 over 6400. Now we're interested when x is equal to 80 meters and if you make the substitution 80 into this equation we can determine that rho is equal to 223.6 meters. Now we also need theta, the angle of the track. Well recall that dy dx so the tangent of theta is just equal to dy dx so in our case theta is equal to the inverse tangent of minus 0.5 and that is 26.6 degrees so now we can go back to the equation for the frictional and normal forces and now we know rho and theta, so we can solve for those. So recall that the normal force was 7848 cosine theta minus 6400, I'm sorry, 64,800 over rho. So we make the substitutions 7848 cosine of 26.6 minus 64. 800 over rho 223.6. So this is 6728 newtons. An equation for f was 7848 sine of theta, now theta is 26.6, minus 2400. So this equals 1114 newtons. This concludes section 13.5, the equation of motion for normal and tangential coordinates. Next up is chapter 14, kinetics of a particle, work and energy.